Welcome to the Funny Hour podcast with James and Tom. Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was, just waiting. I was waiting for the intro music. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I was doing that. I was just waiting for it to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I sometimes think that. You just yeah, wait exactly, for the music. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. But I think, no, Tom, you're not listening to these. <laughs> yeah, that's all That's all done in the magic of editing. Exactly, yeah. yeah. That's all done post. <laughs> po- post post recording, yeah. Yeah. How are you doing, mate? All right, yeah, as we've, uh, as we've just quickly uh, discussed, yeah, got uh, got the old sciaticas down the back and through the leg, so that's lovely. Oh, that's a pain in the ass. It, yeah, it is, it is really, yeah, yeah. It's like uh, it's like walking around with um, somebody else's leg attached. Yeah. <laughs> like a third leg. Like, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Um, yeah, it just, I, I can't run. I tried to run across the road the other day, and I was like, oh, God, I can't move. <laughs> just like you had one really straight leg. Yeah, I had one really good leg and one leg I just couldn't, just couldn't feel on the tarmac. Um, so, yeah, you're uh, yeah. going to have to walk like a crab from now on, mate. I, yeah, yeah, I'll just hop. Everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, hope, hoping it sorts itself out. Yeah, so yeah it will do. I've been prescribed um, more stand-up working rather than sitting at a desk. Yes. Um, yoga. Oh, right. Okay. And um, do some more bloody exercise, you lazy sod. Um, water as well. I'm all right with the old waters. Yeah. Do you mean drinking it or somewhere else? <laughs> 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 yeah, a bit of water sports, that'll sort it out. Yeah. No, um... <laughs> yeah, yeah, Stu, you need to do some surfing, mate. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> or the other kind of water sports. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, apparently it's like, because it's a muscle cramp, it's like um, like cramp like footballers get and they have to get rehydrated and stuff. So. Right, oh yeah, maybe the, the heat wave we've had the last few days hasn't helped, actually. Yeah, it's dried you out, mate, like a dry old tea bag. I'm not, I like... <laughs> <laughs> Like a tough bit of steak. Exactly. You've been enjoying the sun. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I've, I've got Scottish heritage in genes in me, <laughs> so I, me, me and the sun don't go too well together. Yeah. Just like look at it and go, ah, you bastard. Yeah, burning. <laughs> so yeah, me, I, 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 I like. I, it was like being on holiday, wasn't it? Yeah. It was yeah, just, it was, yeah. It was just missing the pool and the and the the mythos in a um, in a nice ice cold glass. Exactly, which really annoyed me because I've just been away to Spain, haven't I? Yeah, you have. Yeah. Yeah, I went to Fortaventura, had a lovely time, and I thought like, and I come when you come back from holiday, when you especially when you go somewhere really hot, you want it to be <laughs> absolutely bloody miserable when you come home. You want to know that everyone's just. It's been 15 degrees of him raining for a fortnight. Exactly, yeah. And you come home with your tan, or partial tan in my case, and, you co- and you're and you like walking around, you're like, oh, you look brown. He's like, I know, I've been away. <laughs> well, I couldn't do it because this country was the same temperature as, <laughs> as Port Aventura. So, so when you walked into work on the Monday morning or whatever it was, everyone yeah. was kind of bright red from sunburn. Yes, pretty much. Yeah. I, I had a slight tan. So obviously, I had the whitest T-shirt you could imagine that I wore into work. Yeah, yeah, to try and it, highlight it. Yeah, honestly, it was like it was so white. Yeah, it was like see-through nearly. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. So I walked in with that one, trying to show off my tan. I buttered myself up before, put a bit of olive oil all over me and stuff yeah, yeah. to make me shine. Yeah, um, yeah. and yeah, no one noticed because everyone was tanned. Yeah, it's. Um, I've had that because I I really apply the sun cream. And yeah. um, there was one holiday I went on. I think it was like my second kind of summer holiday with the wife um, because the first one I got really badly sunburnt. So the <laughs> second one I was applying sun cream like every 10 minutes, you know, proper over the top. Yeah, back and, in it. Yeah, and um, when I got back to work, um, someone said to me, have you been on holiday? Because <laughs> obviously I was the same shade of white. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, did you use sunblock or something? <laughs> He's sunblocking just sat in the hotel room for a fortnight, yeah. <laughs> Drinking. <laughs> With the aircon on, yeah. So, um, yeah, how was your holiday, mate? Yeah, it was brilliant, mate. Spanish waiters no, have no sense of measures. 
in terms of drinks. So it was great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You asked, yeah, yeah. Like a pint, a pint of gin in a yeah. gin and tonic. Yeah, it's not like our bartenders just like measuring out like it's like twenty centiliters and it's near the top. That's fine. Yeah. And then and then put it in your glass. It's like literally, hello, like pouring, pouring, pouring. Like, please stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. These probably know that in the long term you'll end up buying more. It was all inclusive. Oh, that was it? Thing. Oh, yeah. well, there you so go. So it was all inclusive. So you'd expect it to be like uh, they'd be really meany valve with it. But yeah, they're just like, yeah, don't give a shit. Keep pouring, yeah. yeah. And do they do kind of a fancy pour where they lift the bottle up above the head and it's still going in the glass? No, they didn't. No, uh, and I'm glad they didn't because a lot of them were sweating. Um, <laughs> so I didn't want them to lift their arms up. You don't want to see that now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's uh, no, but they didn't do any of that. They just literally pulled poured a pint and did your measure with the other arm while they were focusing on the pint. Right. So you'd end up with like half a half a rum, half a coke, basically in a highball glass. So nice, nice. Yeah. I remember when um, me and the wife, I was on our, it, that was it was on that second holiday, the one where I just stayed indoors for a fortnight. Mm. And uh, in the evening, I, I ventured out when the sun gone down, and we went to the bar. And my wife ordered a gym fizz. Yes. And they got out a pint glass, like a John Smith pint glass, yeah. and it was three quarters gin with a psh of lemonade in it. <laughs> like, like five euro. <laughs> That's what my missus has gin, gin lemonade. Yeah. It? I didn't know it was called gin fizz. Gin fizz, yeah, yeah. It was also oh. the same holiday where we went to a Turkish night and you could have red, white, or rose. Yeah. And uh, my wife said, oh, I'll have a rose. So they just poured in a red and white into the glass. <laughs> Just double hand, shh, there you go, rosé. Now, to be fair to those Turkish people, I used to believe for years that rosé was red and white, white wine mixed. Yeah, well, in, in the young, in you, when you're in your younger days, when yeah. rosé first become a thing, yeah, before like you become a connoisseur of drink and you realise it's its own special wine. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. I also used to think that people who rented, that the landowners paid them to live in the house. Right, yeah, that's a bit of a problem, that, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, oh, it's not, if you're a tenant, it's not a problem. Yeah, that's, that's great. Yeah, so yeah. It's just for, like, looking after the house, they paid them and stuff. Right, I see, yeah. And then yeah. that first month when they knock on the door and say, hey, where's my money? It's yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, it's like, well, where's my money? Yeah, yeah. No, where's my money? No, where's my money? Right, well, I'm moving out then. You're not going to pay me for this. <laughs> exactly. I'll try it with my landlord. Yeah. Um, so, so something. Um, something that was um, funny that happened last week is um, oh. me and the wife went to like a, um, a, fl- a flea market. Oh yeah. Um, Do you buy any? Yeah. Not. Not the. Not the jumpy things that live on cats. <laughs> Um, or, or, the, or, the, or the bass player from Red Hot Chili Peppers, like his side. Yeah. Um, just loads of bass to sell. Just, yeah, yeah, you want to buy a bass? Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I, it's like... It's, <laughs> no, it wasn't that. A flea market, as it's like a posh car boot. Ah, yeah, it's got, well, they, they say, like, antiques, don't they? But it's basically any old shite. It? It's any, well, it is any old shite. And some yeah. and it's something that we saw that was for sale, and I will forward you the picture, it is 100% true. There was, someone was selling a didgeridoo, <laughs> and it, there was a sticker attached to it, and it said, previously owned by Rolf Harris. Um, Shut the front door. <laughs> no. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, 10 quid. Um, previous owner, Ralph Harris, something like that. I will send you the picture. No way. Yeah, so... That can't um, be real. Yeah, I, 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 unless this... I, you know, if, if this bloke doesn't watch the news, then he's probably wondering why he hasn't sold this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, um, I've cut, I bought it for 200 quid and I've got to cut it down. Like, I've got it down to a tenner down. now, yeah. He's an animal he's, hospital. Yeah, he's a national thing. treasure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 I used to love Ralph Harris. Paris, but um, yeah, yeah, kind of gone off him, really. Yeah, got yeah, it's just something about him. Yeah, exactly. um, same with my, my R. Kelly records. People keep looking at me when I'm playing them, <laughs> blasting out of your car on the way home. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My mind's telling me no, no, but my body, <laughs> my body telling me yes. Well, <laughs> listen to your mind, R. Kelly. Yeah. that's what you should have done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you didn't do enough listening to your mind. Um, <laughs> Yeah, there was yeah, there was also a hat for sale that used to be Gary Glitters and yeah, um, yeah a pair of um, Jimmy Savile's trainers. Um, so yeah, now then, now then, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, all this bloke was selling all this memorabilia by those people. Yeah, 
Yeah, exactly. Well, weird. Yeah. That's weird, isn't it? Maybe the police should investigate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, should perhaps give them a call. So, um, <laughs> yeah, it's been a yeah. Well, we were just saying, haven't we? It's been probably over a month since we recorded the podcast, but we've we've been busy, haven't we? We've been on our holidays and enjoying some time off. Yeah, it's stained. I'd say it's been a while. It's, um, been, it's yeah. been a long. Yeah, it's been a long time since we, we've done this because we've both been. You, you've like we've had work commitments and also. I've been on holiday, and yeah, so it's been a bit of a busy month, but we're back on it now. We're back, yeah. We've yeah. got all that done. And I'm glad nothing's tan. happened in the news or anything. No, nothing made. Like, when I was away, it was just like, I put on Sky News, and I thought, God, nothing happening in Britain, as usual. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, just the Prime Minister left. Well, that's well yeah, the Prime Minister who resigned, who's still Prime Minister. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Who, well, um, who guided us all to safety under this recent heat wave by... Taking selfies in an RAF chat. Yeah, yeah. I think he's going to do like his kind of his bucket list the next month, isn't he? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's, he's getting he's basically getting the covers ready for his books, isn't he? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. My yeah. time as prime minister. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's going to like um, parachute off the top of Big Ben. Yeah. Something like that. Um, Have you see, did you see in his uh, end of Parliament speech he quoted the Terminator? Oh, uh, what to say? Uh, hasta la vista, baby. Hasta la vista, baby. Mm. Doesn't that just sum him up? It perfectly sums him up. Yeah. 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 Some people are saying that's um, what he's saying there is that I'll be back. Yeah, like, I was thinking like along them lines that he, he was probably insinuating that. I mean, like the Terminator, he's called the caused the needless death for thousands. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But I just hope he won't be back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's there's lots of rumours going round that he's plotting his return. Um, yeah, that's why he's back in Liz Trust. The because um, he knows she won't last more than a year. Apparently. Oh, I know. Yeah, the uh, candidates for it are. Uh, yeah, they look great, don't they? <laughs> they do. Yes. Yeah. So um, yeah, uh, yeah. It's been yeah. No news in the UK. No news globally. Yeah, nothing, yeah, nothing much yeah. going on. No, nah, nothing. So, in that case, you may as well listen to uh, the uh, great funny stories that we have to enlighten your day. Yeah. Because uh, the country's turned to pot, as per usual, mm. and so is the world. Yeah. Yeah, it's all just gone shite. Yeah, so, i tell you what, with all this going on, I fancy knowing something amazing. Yeah, I might I might have something for you. I might have, I might have a few for you. If you can, you, you. Rem- can you remember your um, intro? Oh, God. It, you know what? It's been a month. Yeah, so, yeah, I think I've got it. Go, go on. That's amazing news. <laughs> news. Was that the one? It was something like that. I think you've had yeah, a few. I think you changed it up quite a bit. Yeah, exactly, yeah. I think I've, I've done a couple of ones, haven't I? Yeah. So, um, Definitely an Aussie one. Yeah, it was amazing. My news. <laughs> <laughs> and then there was amazing news in the style of Amazing Grace. Oh, that was it. Amazing news. That was it. <laughs> I think that's my favourite. Yeah, I think we'll go with that one then. Yeah, yeah we'll right. Do that one. Right. So, um, so yeah, I've got three amazing news stories today. Um, and the first one I'm going to go with is probably it's been all over the mainstream news. It's probably been the only source of good news over the last month. Um, is this Boris James Johnson. Boris Johnson's resigning? <laughs> yeah. That, apart from that one, um, <laughs> it's the James Webb Telescope. Ah yes, the um, the new kind of king of telescopes mm-hmm. um, has obviously been kind of sending its first images back to planet Earth, mm-hmm. um, and it's kind of like everything's in more detail than um, the, the famous kind of images of the universe that were taken by Hubble. Yes, um, I, I, I must admit it, it, the images were better. They've like done some side by side saying this is Hubble, this is James Webb. Yeah, um, I mean it's not like gone from you know uh, 1910s kind of 1920s kind of you know those old school cameras where they have to put cloth you, you know like the photographer's got like a bit of cloth over his head yeah that's hold, it yeah holding up a bulb it hasn't like gone from that to kind of hd um but it, it, it is better you know, it's basically cloth. like when you get a new phone exactly yeah it's like yeah. just gone one upgrade i think exactly you you definitely notice the difference yeah but it's not much of a difference no but although i, th- I think i think it's starting to get into kind of it's starting to get a bit of momentum now this oh. this this telescope starting to get uh, warmed up starting to get warmed up now something that was interesting is it's got less memory than an iphone 13 really yeah 
Bloody hell. Yeah. I bet it works better than that, yeah. I bet, yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's been taking uh, images looking back some like 13, 14 billion years into um, the, the life of the universe kind of thing. Good God. Which yeah. is amazing. I and did see some pictures when I was away, and it was like, it, was, it just looked like nothing you'd ever seen before. Yeah, exactly, yeah. I think that's the difference where you'd see, in Hubble, you'd see blurred kind of universes, uh, yeah. blurred um, galaxies. Now you can actually see, like, the spiral and the arms and the galaxy and stuff. Yeah. From these things that are absolutely ridiculous, you know, uh, a, f- a few miles away. Um, something that is amazing is that in the last few days, they've um, taken a pic- it's taken a picture of a galaxy um, which they believe um, this the, the light that they can see is from only 300 million years after the universe started. Oh, God. The previous record was 400 million years from Hubble. Yeah. So they've managed to knock 100 million years off, you know, in terms of how far they can see. Um, oh, what I want to know is what if they kind of can go back to the start of the universe, what what will they expect to see? Just like a big flash of light? What's Possibly. I wonder if they'll be able to go back to, like, day one. You never know, do you? It might be. It might that's be all go back the... to dinosaurs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, this is it, isn't it? That's the thing. Like, it's that thing. If, if if you're an alien on a planet far enough away, you could be watching the Battle of Hastings. Exactly. Yeah. It could be like, oh bloody hell, the French are winning. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> or you know, if if you're if you're parked a couple of million light years away, you might be. Well, no, oh, it won't be a couple of million. Anyway, you could be somewhere watching the 1966 World Cup final. Exactly, watching it again. Last watching time it England again. won something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so it's mind bending how it works. Yeah. What what I get, find mind bending about the universe is that that telescope could be parked just outside the Earth, right, in space, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Let's say it's parked up next to the Moon, mm-hmm. and it'll take a picture of the universe as far as it can, right? Right. You could then move that telescope for the next twenty, thirty years to the edge of the solar system, mm-hmm. and the quality won't be any different. Because it's such a minuscule change in distance. See, now you've, you, you're you starting to melt me head a bit. And this is what happens when I watch Brian Cox. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. he, starts, he starts off with, oh, making it nice and simple. This is how a volcano works and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Smiling at you and stuff. And then he just gets a bit deep and you're like, oh, hold on, fucking yeah. hell. Now, now I've got a nose what do you mean? headache. What, what do you mean it, there's a square planet out there? They need to be serious. <laughs> yeah. I remember watching one of them and he said, if you were stood on top of, if you was, if you was stood on some ladders six foot in the air yeah. like, on this planet and yeah. you jumped off the ladders towards the ground... By the time you hit the ground, you'd be going three million miles an hour. Yeah, see. Shit like that. There's that much gravity on it that it just like... Exactly, yeah. Blob. Yeah, and then like, if you got the seven billion people on Earth and put them on this planet, they'd be crushed to the size of a pebble. All, that all the what? people. All the, yeah, and it's just like, what? What, I'm, what, I was, what the analogy I was thinking of is, let's say I'm taking a picture of you on my iPhone. Yes, which I've done many times. Many times, yeah. Only fans page. Only fans, yeah. <laughs> five, five, five dollars a month. Yeah. Um, <laughs> say I took a picture of my iPhone from a hundred meters away. Yeah. You know, the, and I zoom and then zoomed in on the picture. Obviously, it wouldn't be very clear. But mm-hmm. if then I took a picture from like a meter away, it'd be lovely and clear and see your beautiful face, right? Yes, right, it's beautiful. The the thing with this telescope, the equivalent is, is that if I take a picture of you from a hundred meters away, yeah. And then I move to the edge of the solar system, and basically I've taken like half a step forward. Right. That's how big the universe is. It doesn't make any difference whether you're taking it next to the moon or next to bloody Pluto. So the picture will still be clear. Pic- oh, it's getting really deep now, isn't it? <laughs> no, no, the picture still be blurry. Oh, God. My head. <laughs> <laughs> ah! <laughs> um, I think we better move on. <laughs> we better move on. Yeah. So, it is amazing. It's it's incredible news that is, mate. Yeah. It, is, it is amazing, yeah. And I'm, I'm a bit of a spacey. And like you, I, I, I've watched uh, Brian Cox. So I do like my space stuff. Um, How does he smile all the time like that? Yeah, well, yeah. He, he, he either, he's either really faking it or he actually knows what he's talking about. Yeah, he's faking it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, he was a keyboard player in a... Pop band, so 
Yeah, exactly. Things will only get better. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And that's what he says, isn't it? It's like, it's the biggest lie in the universe because things by nature get progressively worse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what's it called? Um, what's the word? I, I always forget the word for this. It's um, basically when stuff just disintegrates over time, doesn't it? it loses yeah. quality. Exactly, um, yeah. Disintegrates. The, the, it's not that. Um, the word will Degradates. come to No. It's something like, it's not epiphany, it's something like that. Um, don't know. Write in. Write in. Us. Yeah. yeah. Tweet us, yeah. If you know what the fuck we're on about. <laughs> if, if there's ever been like, two less qualified people to talk about space. I know. Okay, entropy. Exactly. entropy. 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 That's what it is. It's entropy. Yeah. Christ, if I was teaching space, I'd be saying all the the uh, moons are made of butter and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, make that's... You go along, can't you? Say that again. You can make it up as you go along, apart from the moon, can't you? Of course you can, because it's so bonkers, you can just make it up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's my first bit of amazing news. Excellent. I like, um, I like that. The second bit of amazing news is um, there's been discovery um, of a new plant. Not a new planet. Not a new pl- No, I've gone off space now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a new plant. A new carnivorous plant. Meaning <clears throat> it can eat people. It eats people. No. Um, so, you know, like Venus fly traps, they obviously, they're a meat eater. They eat flies. Yes. Yeah. And then there's some others where you fall into the flower and it's like liquid and it dissolves it into acid and eats it and all that kind yeah. of stuff. But this one's slightly different in that it catches its prey underground. What, like mm, voles and mice and stuff? So, it's like beetles and worms and insects and things like that. Right. And it's got these, like, these I don't know what they are like. Um, like these containers underground, and mm-hmm. it kind of it it, it they, they move underground, and when something falls into it, it then kind of eats it. Well, oh, right, okay. So like a bit like a booby trap then. A bit like a booby trap. It's underground, yeah. yeah. So it's it's the first of its kind where it's ca- it's it's ca- catching stuff under the ground. Yeah. And it can it can catch things up to eleven centimeters long. Bloody hell, fire. Um, so, yeah, it's it's kind of like, wow, this is like something that used to be like in the movies in the 1950s. Yeah. You know, what was that? The Day of the Triffids or whatever it was called. So yeah. That's what I, yeah. So this is real life, like a meat-eating plant. Um, oh, God. What I, then the question I've got, right, is let's say you're a vegetarian or a vegan, right? Mm. And, and I've got nothing against the, the old veggies, right? Yeah, you know, apart from the absolute nutters who like won't drive through Hamburg, you know, or, 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 or you know, or don't attend meetings, like like <laughs> that. You know. yeah. um, but we'll, would let's say let's say scientists also discovered this plant was like the best tasting thing on planet Earth. Okay, would would vegans still eat it? Probably not. No, because it's a meat eater. Because it's at meat. Yeah. So it would be like by proxy, wouldn't it? Yeah. So I think, no, I don't think they'd eat it. Even if this was like the equivalent of bacon to meat eaters? Yeah. I, yeah, I don't think it would. They'd yeah. have to go the full full dish and say, no, I can't eat they it. They would, yeah. That's yeah. because it's passed through. Like, say you ate meat and you didn't eat plants, you couldn't have a cow. That's a really good point, actually, isn't it? Yeah. Not that I've never actually heard of that. Like a proper carnivore, <laughs> where you don't eat any veg. And yeah, I don't eat veg, and therefore I'm not going to eat this because it's eating grass. Yeah, exactly. So uh, you'd be pretty limited. You'd have to eat something that eats other things, so like a lion. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> good point, actually. Yeah, you can only eat meat that eats meat. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Yeah, that's the, that's the comparison. Isn't it? Yeah, that's really good, actually. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is a new plant that's discovered. Um, where has it been discovered? I'm guessing it's oh, it's in Indonesia. Okay, I was gonna I was gonna say the Amazon because everything's in the Amazon. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah everything. Stuff. If anything's been discovered, like it's a new species or anything like that, it's usually in the Amazon. It's not. Yeah. So this new is tribe yeah. Or anything. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this is a new a new plant that's been discovered. Sweet. That's good. Amazing news then. We're glad that's, about that. We're glad about that. Glad that's been discovered. Like uh, a couple of discoveries in the life. We do. Yeah. Um, so my third third piece of amazing mm. news. Um, yep. So sometimes I like to cover amazing news. Um, obviously, the first two are amazing kind of advancements. Yeah, great for you. This one is just amazing because the, the story exi- exists. Okay. So there's a Chinese ice cream company that has made ice cream that doesn't melt. 
even when blasted with a blowtorch. What? Um, so the brand has been forced to um, defend its products after videos of the indestructible ice cream has gone vi- viral. Um, so yeah, uh, there's this Chinese company um, called Chai Cream. Oh, uh, yeah, very nice. And they've created an ice cream that just doesn't melt. Right. How are they doing that? Well, people think there's some kind of hidden ingredient in it. Mm. Um, I, I think they're saying... Yeah, I think they're saying it's kind of like um, a seaweed extract. Right. Which is um, which is um, allowed, which is illegal in the US uh, for consumption yeah. uh, in their food standards. Um but yeah, there's there's lots of videos with hundreds of millions of views of people trying to um, burn this ice cream and it just doesn't melt. It's like oh. plastic. Oh god. Um, so yeah, it's um, people are obviously saying like, I don't know if I want to be eating this. No, I'd be the same. I'd be very. I'd I'd be want loads of people to try it first. Yeah, I mean, you can imagine this might be something that just kind of just sits in your stomach for like fifteen years. Does it keep cold though? It stays cold. Oh, good point, actually. Um, yeah. I think it says it stays cold up to 88 degrees. Right. Um, so, yeah, it, 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 I mean, it, if you think ice cream historically was just kind of what churned milk, some sugar and a bit of flavouring and it was stuck in a freezer. Yeah, that's it, yeah. I mean, what's this I didn't put in it so it doesn't fr- melt? Mm. It's got to be some kind of chemicals. It's not going to be good for you, is it? Exactly. Yeah. There's been there's been links to the, some of these chemicals might be um, might um, cause cancer, okay. um, but there's kind of like there's competing evidence that says it doesn't. Um, so yeah, By it's called Chinese. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Chinese authorities said, nah, you don't get cancer. Nah, right? yeah, don't nah, be, don't it's debatable. A, it's debatable. Yeah, it tastes <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah. Um, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's it's China's most expensive ice cream. Good God! Um, it, it, it sells for about ten dollars um, uh, per ice cream, so they're like you know, like um, in a wrapper, you know, a, yes. a single ice cream kind of thing. Um, so yeah, the they sell for ten dollars um, an ice cream. Um, apparently, apparently, um, some news agency said like, "Why are you charging ten dollars for this ice cream?" You know, it's an yeah. absolute rip off, and the company just come back and went, "That's how much it costs to make." <laughs> just yeah. enough said enough said yeah. That's, yeah. yeah that's why we have to apparently there's been a massive boom in China with ice creams um, during Covid for some reason I don't know why oh, right um, so yeah this They're is not, you used to have it that much before I don't know I don't know I, I've heard I've heard um, I think as a, as a, as a nation or um, that people think the Europeans smell of cheese don't they yeah so I don't milk, know if yeah. I don't know if kind of milk based products are kind of popular perhaps in Asia or I don't know yeah. um, we eat a lot of cheese and milk and ice cream um, <laughs> um, so yeah I just the thought box. that was amazing that there's an ice cream bin invented that doesn't even melt under a blowtorch no I think that's pretty amazing it's amazing but I'm sceptical yeah and I don't want to eat it exactly yeah I will quite happily um, <laughs> stay with um, the, the, the conveniences we have in the UK I think yeah, to be honest with you, I like the melted ice cream. I like it when you scoop it up and, and it's got, and the last bits of it is all melted and stuff. I don't mind that. Yeah, yeah. I can live with that. Can live with that, yes. Yeah, so, um, <laughs> so it's like a mini milkshake. Yeah. It is, exactly, yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's um, amazing news. That's some great amazing news, that is, mate. Thanks. And after all that amazing news, and especially about the space stuff, I think I need a break. Oh. <laughs> Hello, I'm Tom Hardy. And this... It's a book at bedtime called There's a Bear in My Chair, read by Tom Hardy in the style of Charlie Bronson. There's a bear in my chair. There he's been there, that bear in my chair. And if this bear doesn't remove himself from said chair, I will rip his fucking head off and shit down his neck. Book at bedtime starts next week on the Tiny Tots TV channel. <laughs> From the filmmakers who brought you Why Pigs Can't Fly and Is Bob Your Uncle, the Pointless Documentary Channel brings you this brand new documentary, The World's Smallest Piece of Gravel. Bob Knockers and Chuck Frisbee 
lead a team of experts around the globe to find the world's smallest piece of gravel. They encounter dangerous animals, hurricanes, drought, and they also face their biggest challenge. To make sure they don't include rock or sand in their gravel classification. The world's smallest piece of gravel starts next week on the Pointless Documentary Channel. Hello and welcome back to the Funny Hour with James and Tom. Is, um, is your head, can, have you, is, you, is your nose bleed stopped? I've just gone and stuck it in the fridge. Right, okay. Next to the ice cream that melts. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, yeah, it was a bit of a sweater. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. no, it was, it was good news. It was amazing news anyway. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm looking forward to listening back to that part and just thinking, what on earth is, are you talking about? <laughs> but that's what we said. We space, you can just make it up. Yeah, yeah, perhaps we'll, yeah, yeah. Can't you? Yeah, yeah, we can. The Milky Way is really made of milk. Mil- yeah, why do you think they've called it the Milky Way? Yeah, exactly. Why do they call the chocolate bars that? Yeah, why is planet Mars called Mars? Yeah, exactly. Bit of a clue. It's Bit all made of, of chocolate. We've talked about this before, haven't we? After that woman got turned into a toffee crisp by aliens. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it keeps <laughs> co- keeps coming back, doesn't it, to food and chocolate, the old space stuff. It keeps coming round, doesn't it? Yeah. It's um, more than coincidence, I think. That's why we, James and Tom's podcast, are releasing Jupiter bars. J- yeah, Jupiter bars. Big round chocolate balls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That taste nothing like Ferrero Rocher, and if they try and sue us, we will sue them back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cool. Okay. What we'll do now is we'll move on to another segment, one of our favourites, is What the Book Was That? Can I have an intro, please? What the Book Was That? What the Book Was That? Um. And the, basically, this section is. Exactly as it says in the title. What the book was that? We have some uh, titles of books that are out there and available to purchase, and you can. And it's not illegal. You don't have to go on the dark web to get them or anything like that. They are legal from usually from Amazon, aren't they, mate? Yeah. Yeah, most are on Amazon. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, you can go out and get them. Um, and they uh, they are genuinely used to help (laughs) inspire your life, and also. To warn you, like, um, were the Nazis green was one of my favourites. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, les- the book of lesbian horse stories. Lesbian horse stories, yeah. Love yeah. it. Okay, yeah. so this week you're running with them, aren't you, mate? Yeah, so I've got, I've got, th- I've got three. Um, I have got, like, a big list. There's a website with a full list of these, which I'm just ripping off. Yeah. And um, the, the kind of the thought was, is, um, last month I thought I was running out of the good ones. Mm-hmm. Um, but I skipped through about ten, and oh no, they've come back. Yeah, um, yeah. There's some really good ones. Um, so yeah, this first one, um, I like kind of um, ways that you can reuse things. You know, like we're living in the green age now. Oh yes. Um, you know, recycling. You, yeah, recycling, reusing stuff. Um, you know, even if it's like your vegetable peelings, put it in a compost heap, then that can help you grow more vegetables and flowers, yep. and then da da da, the process stuff like that. So I like I like reusing stuff where I can. <laughs> um, I never thought about reusing like this though, um, and the book title is called "Reusing Old Graves." Oh my god! <laughs> um, by Davison Douglas. I'm going to have to see a picture for this one. Um, so, yeah, I will send you a picture now. Yeah, so reusing old graves. Um, and we'll put them on the Twitter feed as well. So people yeah, I need to get his on Twitter, don't we? Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's a very official-looking book. Um, you yeah. Know, not much has gone into the way of design on it. It looks like a very official, something that might have been produced during the war or something. I don't know. Right. Um, so, yeah, reusing old graves. And what do they recommend? Just like... Pile them on top of each other. Yeah, it's very, it's very plain, isn't it? It's very plain. Yeah. Um. Oh God. I mean, I, I'm trying to think what what actually might be contained within this book. I don't know. I don't know. Um. Oh, is the author taking the piss? Douglas. Doug. <laughs> Davis Douglas. Yeah. Oh, as in he's dug dug a grave. Yeah, dug the grave. Yeah. Yeah. We've had one of these before, wasn't it? He had a weird name. Yeah, it's something, something in line with it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, reusing old graves. I mean, I don't know. Um, just, yeah. just good for. I don't know. Burying other stuff. Well, it's uh, environmentally friendly. Yeah, it's using yeah. up more land, are you? That's um, a good point, actually. Yeah. 
I, I heard a mad thing once. I think in Italy, if you've been dead for seven years, they turf you out of your grave. Oh, do they? Yeah, something like that. Anyway, what, and, yeah. what, <laughs> you what can be in a grave you? for seven years or something, and then they turf you out. Of it. So that's kind of like reusing it and stuff. It is, yeah. I mean, I'm yeah. not, I'm not, I'm not too bothered what they do with me when the time comes. Um, yeah. I, well, I've always, I like to be fired into space. Yeah. Going back to space theme. Yeah, hey, exactly. Yeah. Put on a rocket. Put on a rocket yeah. and just yeah. fired into space. Yeah, for, exactly. for eternity. Yeah, that'd be all right, wouldn't it? You are. You are listening to the funny hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's taken a very dark turn, hasn't it? Um, no, that, that's good, that is, mate. I like yeah. that book. So, yeah, yeah, please write in if you've got any um, suggestions for how to reuse a grave. <laughs> yeah, um, can't. Yeah. We're not going to actually buy that book, I think. Yeah, <laughs> but, uh, yeah I'm, the only thing I think of is perhaps, like, um, if you're um, a robber, a thief, you know, somewhere to bury your, your stolen jewellery. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Or... To live in it, maybe? I don't know. Yeah, you could live in it, yeah. Yeah, you could live in it, yeah. make a little, yeah, a yeah. little grave hole. Yeah, stuff. fill it with water, take a bath. I don't exactly. know. Exactly. There you go. There you Multi-purpose. Go. I love it, yeah. <laughs> right. This next one. Um, yeah. So, um, I, I'm just going to just give you the title straight out of it. Go on. Um, Poo gets stuck. What? Poo gets stuck. <laughs> Can you have a guess what it is? Poo gets stuck. Um, a you bend guided book or something? No, no, it's um, it's 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 actually um, it's actually a, ch- a children's book. Uh, Winnie the Pooh gets stuck in a oh, rabbit hole. Oh, bollocks! Of course, yeah. Um, yeah, Pooh gets stuck. Oh god, yeah, I can see it now. Oh, poor Pooh. Yeah, so <laughs> Pooh Pooh got stuck in the hole. It looks um, it's like in the picture that the rabbit's got his poo stuck. Oh yeah, he's got a bit of a yeah, like a yeah, get out, you bastard. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, I thought that oh, was that's great. good. We've never had one for kids before. Yeah, so yeah, if 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 anyone's listening, got kids, you can you can um, you can yeah. join you listening to this episode. Read them and tell them about the time that Pooh got stuck. Pooh got stuck. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that's my second one. Love um, it. Now this third one is the the, the little children might um, like to listen to this to have a good chuckle. At um at our generation. Oh really? So this is a book that would have been brought out in the late nineties, I'm guessing. Okay. Around or around or the start of the millennium, around the birth of kind of fifty six K dial up modem. Oh god, yeah. And all that kind of stuff. You know where it you know <laughs> it ta- it's it take an hour to load up. Yeah, um, you you lot don't know the pain. You do you don't know the pain. So when the first PCs kind of started arriving in people's homes. Yeah. So yeah, I think this book is probably from the 90s. And it says, Mummy, why is there a server in the house? <laughs> um, <laughs> you got a bitch. Yeah, it's on its way. Um, helping your child understand the stay-at-home server. Mummy, why is there a server in the house? See, if you read that, you could think like they've got a butler. Yeah, 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 he's yeah. serving, yeah, yeah, yeah. By Tom O'Connor, PhD. Yeah. Can your child understand what a stay at home server? A stay at home server like a stay at home mum? Yeah. Yeah, perhaps, well, this is the thing, isn't it? That, that maybe they thought, oh, this is going to be really big. People can yeah, get a exactly. server in the house, it's going to do everything. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Um, I'm going to plug in, not thinking about like how you can one day have a computer in the size of your, in your palm. Exactly, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, this is obviously kind of like, the, you know, what next? People have got computers in their house, what next? A bloody big server. Yeah, exactly. Uh, a big rack big server. Big mainframe thing. Big, but yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, so yeah, I just thought that was something that would have definitely been brought out when we were kids. Definitely, yeah. Probably something like that. Yeah, it's like that News of the World thing, you know, in the 1950s, and they're going, one day we'll all be walking around with a telephone in our pocket. Oh God, yeah, tomorrow's world. Yeah, and everyone would have gone, <laughs> rubbish, what? Yeah, don't talk yeah. rubbish, you know. <laughs> one, one day, every car, every household will have a car. Yeah, you know, exactly. Not just, not just the rich bloke in the street. Exactly, yeah. 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 One day, everyone will have a black and white TV. <laughs> um, so, yeah. That was uh, very much that equivalent of our time, I think. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, I like that. So, yeah, that's my... Uh, what the book was at. Excellent. Great books there. And make yeah. sure you, you all out, go out and get them. Especially the grave one. It's um, it'd be good that. Yeah, yeah. And if anyone, if anyone finds any good uses for graves, let us know. Yeah, exactly. There you go. Tweet us. Tweet that. Okay. Time for a new feature, I believe. Yeah. Um. So I'm, I've kind of jumped on the back of the um, Liam Gallagher been um, kind of like big news again. Um, yeah. Me and you, big Oasis fans. 
Yeah, big Liam and Noel fans, Oasis fans. Yeah, and obviously he's, get Nebworth, he? he's, he's been back to Nebworth, you know, um, and he's he's back on top form. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, I just thought of um, maybe we could get Liam into a feature. And the one I thought of, obviously Liam's very famous for his quotes and his one-liners. Yeah, um, very but, pithy. Uh, yeah, and also his former kind of um, one of the world's most famous leaders of all time, Napoleon. Yeah. Um, he's got quite a lot when you kind of look into his back catalogue. Um, so it got me thinking of the feature, no way, Liam, or Napoleon. Yeah. Um, so I don't, I don't, you're better at doing accents. Don't know if you want to kind of do a merger of a Manc French accent. Okay. No way, Liam, or Napoleon. <laughs> that's it. That's the yeah, that'll do. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm going to, re- I'm going to read you three quotes and you've got to guess whether it's Liam or Napoleon. Right, let's do it. I'm ready. So, you ready? So I'll give you. T- I'll just show you how it works. So if I said, "Never interrupt your enemy when he is making a mistake," Napoleon. Napoleon. If I said to you, "She can't even chew gum and walk in a straight line, let alone write a book," Napoleon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, yeah, Liam. Liam. Yeah, yeah. yeah, um, yeah you was talking about posh spice. Um, <laughs> so that's the kind of thing, right? So I've got right. three quotes for you. Go on. Three again. I'm I've got three. three. I'm, I'm, I'm going to see if I could do them in a mank kind of accent just to confuse you. Oh. Right. Or a French accent. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, if I had to choose a religion, uh, the sun would be my universal giver of life. Ooh. Now, Napoleon did turn... I remember being in Paris and he said this, Napoleon turned Notre Dame into a storage warehouse. So... I don't know if he's a fan of religion, so I'm going to go Napoleon. Ting! Wee! Yeah, it's Napoleon. There you go. See, I did have some Napoleon knowledge. You did, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, this is the thing you were like, oh, I don't know much about. You've also been reading that book of big Napoleon facts on holiday, haven't you? All on holiday, yeah. Big book of Napoleon. Big, big book of Napoleon facts. <laughs> <laughs> um, The next one. Cool. Ready? <laughs> of all the people... <laughs> Of all the people of Europe, Spaniards disgust me the least. Napoleon did... I know from Sharp, <laughs> Napoleon <laughs> invaded Spain. Bastard. Go on then, you bastard. Um, but I think it must be something Liam would say. <laughs> no. No, it's Napoleon. Oh, crap. Yeah. Um, of other people of Europe, Spaniards disgust me the least. Um, yeah, it was Napoleon. Oh, so, <laughs> the, the decider. Right. <laughs> they can't all be Napoleon. Uh, every time I look in the mirror, God looks back. No, fucking hell, without a doubt, 110% Liam. Ting! Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 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 so uh, yeah, that was uh, that was Liam Gallagher. Yeah, uh, without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah, wouldn't even have to think about that one. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, that was our feature. Um, no way, Liam or Napoleon. I really like that, mate. I it's like right, that new feature. I think I can. I think I can stretch it out for a couple more episodes. Yeah, we could do variations as well, like um, Caesar Milano or Caesar. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean. <laughs> There's, Napoleon, it, it sounds like he was like all about the sound bites. Oh, ah, yeah, it de- yeah, it definitely was. He Absolute had his own logic. podcast. Didn't he? he had his own podcast, yeah. yeah book, uh, book, uh, <laughs> 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 um, so yeah. Oh, okay. On that, we'll take a break. Then. <gasps> Let's have a break. <gasps> Let's have a kick. Fizzy Versage. <laughs> Dog shit, the new foul fragrance from Visi Visage. Hello and welcome back. You're here with Tom and James from the Funny Hour. Hi. Hi, how you doing? Hi. Yeah, I'm all right, yeah. Have you found the Lord yet? <laughs> Every time I look in the mirror, he looks back at me. <laughs> uh, Very good. Yeah. 
Okay, it's time for the main event. It's time for our favourite, oh, I'd say both of our favourite parts of the podcast yeah. is uh, weird news. We love a bit of weird news. Where if, you're, if you're a new listener, it's basically weird news, alternative news that doesn't get any coverage on the news, but it's funny. Well, usually funny, sometimes tragic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. We straddle uh, the I, line of um, sensi- sensitive and funny. Exactly. I've got four for you today. Woo! One of them is a risk, because I don't know if you've already done it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm not too sure. So we'll go with it anyway. And okay. If not, we'll just cut it out. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> okay. So the so the first one, I'll, I'm going to have to send you a picture after I've read the title. Okay. Okay. Um... So the first news headline is bong. Oh, do you want to do a bong? Bong. Elderly couple refused to pay £200 bill in pay-per-view porn route. <laughs> <laughs> oh, go on. No, I'm, I'm going to send you a picture. Oh, now, I then. want you to to, re- to look at this live on air. Yeah. And you tell me if you think this man standing next to his wife holding the bill looking absolutely horrified, is guilty. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> is that not a man of a guilt? <laughs> is that, that not guilt? That is guilt, and he's thinking, I can get away with this. Yeah, exactly. If you look guilt in the dictionary, that face yeah. be next. <laughs> yeah, he's thinking, Vera doesn't know how to work the, the internet. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. So basically... Story. Uh, Ann and Ron Haywood, um, an elderly couple, were billed two hundred pounds for pay per view, pay per view porn films. They uh, set ordered, and they said they're not paying a penny. Wow. Uh, both retired, seventy two and seventy five, and were left stunned after staff at Virgin Media told them dozens of blue movies have been ordered on their account. Wow. The couple from Reddish and Stockport were previously uh, disputed bills for adult films in two thousand and nine and two thousand and twelve. Now it keeps occurring, doesn't it? Yeah, you know, it's kind of it's happened before. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Once this probably could be a mistake. Three times yeah. with different companies. Uh, I think he's having a bit of a pull on watching. He is, yeah, and he's probably mistakenly bought something. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, guilty. Uh, yeah, he looks guilty. The titles included Robin Hood. Throbbing. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm joking. <laughs> okay. I love that. So that's that one. That's the first one. Love it. The next one's a bit of risk because I don't know if you've already done it. Right. And it's quite a popular weird news. Okay. Um, so we'll go for it anyway. Yeah. So if you give a uh, bong. Bong. Man eats underwear to beat breathalyzer. <laughs> I don't think we have done it, but I think I've seen that. Yeah, I think exactly. I've seen it, yeah. Um, an 18 year old Stettler man, I believe that's probably in America, in the hope that he would, uh, eats his own underwear in the hope that he would, uh, cotton fabric would absorb all the <laughs> alcohol before he took the breathalyzer <laughs> test, provision for all court. Um, the testing, yeah. So it, it was like he'd been pulled over. Um, on his way to the teacher. laundry. He's a teacher. Yeah, he's a teacher as well, yeah. So he'd been pulled over and, um, yeah, he, he once, he quickly got into the back of the car, took his underpants off and started eating his own underwear. <laughs> People were leaving the courtroom with tears in their eyes trying not to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I bet, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's brilliant. David, sir, sir, we take your heart off to you for your ingenuity, mate. <laughs> yeah. I, did you say it went to court? Yeah. I wonder what his brief told him to say. Oh, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> you, you win. That was brilliant. <laughs> I've heard, I've heard about like, um, and I'm no way saying you should do this. No, no. And I've totally. never done it because I've never drunk yeah, and don't, drunk. Don't, 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 don't drunk at drunk. all. Never yeah, do it. No, no, no. Um, but apparently put two P in your mouth. Yes, I've heard that one as well. Good, right. I'm not I think someone, to... I think that was another one where someone got cop, like, copper poisoning, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> He went turn green. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. 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 So that's the second one. Yeah, you love that. Yeah. The, the, the third one. I've not even read the whole story, but I just I saw the title and started laughing. It's a cracking title, is it? Yeah. So yeah. it's from the Metro. Metro, a pretty good source for the old weird, weird news. It's, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's one of the best. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the title is: Woman who pleasured herself outside Waitrose had a hoard of sex toys in her handbag. <laughs> 
A woman has been told she's facing jail for court herself, ple- pledging herself on a bench outside Waitrose. Oh, what? Beverly Dean, 54, exposed her breasts as she committed the solo act in front of a pair of workers who saw through their office window Jeez. when police arrived on the scene in Northwich, Cheshire. Oh, what? There we go. They found a hoard of sex toys, including lube in her handbag. Jeez. Yeah, she's been done for public indecency. She stopped to smoke a cigarette as well, and then continued to suck <laughs> her fingers and place them between her legs. Oh, what? Now, now I'm, I, I don't mean this in a horrible way, but I'm guessing she's got some kind of mental health illness or on something. I don't know. Possibly. Well, she looks quite smart. She's wearing a suit and all. Right? Did she yeah. just get carried away? She's like th- on a lunch break and just couldn't help herself. I, th- I think so, yeah. I think you've uh, put the finger on it there, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, I've never been in Waitrose, but I can't imagine it's worth masturbating to. No, no. <laughs> no. I'm far too poor to go in Waitrose, but I can't imagine yeah. it's that good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the fruit's great, especially the, the gropes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where that comes from. That's really bad. Fish fingers. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. 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 no, no, move no. Oh, on. on. Move on. Stop, 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 stop. Yeah, yeah. Let's go to the final one, um, <laughs> which is my favourite. Um, Vicar Court having... <laughs> oh, God. Vicar Court having sex with Henry the Hoover. <laughs> I think this might be the third Henry the Hoover story we've had. I think so. Vicar Court having sex with Henry the Hoover carried oh. on after being seen as well. What? Oh, it was an ex- it was an Henry the X. Well, well. It, what God? Yeah, you obviously saw him doing it. <laughs> a retired vicar has been put on the sex offenders register after his court getting intimate with a Henry the Hoover. John Jeffs, seventy four, was wearing just a pair of lady stockings. Oh my! God. And the vacuum nozzle, which was thrust in between his legs when he was caught. By a churchgoer who was attending a talk about Asperger's syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> they described how he was standing between two dark brick chairs, thrusting it into the Henry Hoover at the Baptist Centre, the Middleton Shirley, Northamptonshire. Oh. They said even though they saw them, Jeff continued to push his groin in towards the Henry Hoover, fam- famous for its relentless, powerful suction. <laughs> it's- I mean, uh, uh, yeah, I think that's. I think we'll leave it there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a bit worse. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm trying to think about. I'm trying to think of a pun. Oh, he got. I can't believe he got caught. It's got a suck. It's, yeah, did it? Did he have the suction on full revs? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, if that's if that's your kind of thing, that's your kind of thing. If that's your Hoover bag, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's um, yeah. I mean, that, that's I think that's the third Henry the Hoover story we've had. I oh, know Henry's a oh, naughty lad. That Henry the Hoover, he is, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's as if like cleaning carpets is his second job. Yeah, exactly. His um, first is pleasuring, pleasuring people. Yeah, I mean it's, that's why it's got the face on it, hasn't it? But um, exactly. Yeah. yeah, these stories just suck, don't they? Exactly, matey. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, that's all the weird news. So Love to it. end the show, it's it's nearly that time for classic album it is classic album yeah and we've only got a couple of minutes left so I'll be really quick um, okay so this is a band we have seen once um, can you remember they were supporting the Donners not the Ordinary Boys was it no it was Mando Diao mm. we, I oh always god forget yeah it's Manchester them. Academy that's right yeah and um, I'm guessing like we're probably two of about six people in the UK have ever heard of them. Um, so they're a Swedish band that come out at the start of the noughties. Yeah. They were kind of right up there with uh, the Strokes and the Libertines. They were kind yeah. of like Sweden's answer to that. They are a fantastic band. If they'd been British, they would have been massive, I think. Yeah. Um, a really good kind of... Their first album is like really rock and roll, kind of 63 Beatles slash Stones kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, and they're one of my favourite bands. Um, the album I'm going to pick is their fourth album. It's called Never Seen the Light of Day. Okay. Um, so it's their when fourth album. Released? So it was released in 2007, um, right. only a year after their third album. So they were quite prolific in their early days. Yeah, we're uh, training them out. Right? Yeah, their first, third, and fourth albums are brilliant, but the fourth one just about kind of pips it for me. Um, it's a great mixture of kind of ballads, acoustics, kind of rock and roll. It is just a fantastic album. Um, yeah. Never seen the light of day. Um, they're still going, or I think one of the original members has now left the band. Oh, right, okay. Um, so, yeah, Mando Diao, um, 
you're very lucky if you ever get to see them in the UK. Uh, as I say, we, we, we wanted to see them, didn't we? And we had to go and see them support the Donners, who were kind of an all-girl American rock group, weren't they? Yeah, they were like, they were like come on and take it off. Was that that was one? It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had one massive hit, yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, it was, it was, yeah, we went to see him so we could see the Mando Joe. Um, but yeah, uh, Bring Them In is their first album. Otaocracy is their third one, which are great albums, but Never Seen the Light of Day, their fourth album. Okay. Um, just a great rock and roll album. If you're into kind of 60s music or Britpop or anything, the Strokes, um, Libertines, it'll, it'll fit right in. It's a Any songs album. in particular? Uh, oh god let's have a look through the track listing um, if I don't live today then I might be here tomorrow uh, gold is great uh, train on fire uh, one blood as well um, just just the whole album's great and it just yeah. writs, a lot of the songs kind of flow into one another the um, one that stands out for me uh, immediately is train on fire because it sounds like a Morrissey kind of <laughs> sounded song <laughs> train on fire <laughs> yeah. uh-huh. I might die but I need to get to my destination <laughs> I've got the latest one from Cruise. Yeah, it's, it was delayed by five minutes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. spent the day in bed. Um, the cuff is shut. Yeah. Yeah. W.H. Smith's is shut. Um, um, actually, it says here, look on Wikipedia, the cover for the album bears a strong resemblance to the covers used by Morrissey and the Smiths for many of their releases. There you go. Hey, what a perfect way to end the podcast. Perfect. That's a great way to end the podcast. Yeah. That's a, that sounds like a great album, mate. So, yeah, let's go for it. Yeah, Never Seen the Light of Day, Mando Diao. That's spelled M-A-N-D-O space D-I-A-O. D-I-N-D-O. And the Swedish, but all the songs are in English. So don't be put it, off by that. Exactly. They're not going to start singing. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Like, think, think of like ABBA. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Cool. Okay, then. That's it. That's all we've got time for. Yeah, follow us on the old Twitters at yeah. Funny Hour UK. It's been a pleasure having a chat, mate. And yeah, yeah. I'll speak to you soon. Bye, everyone. Bye, bye. Bye.